what would you what what would you be your advice for uh, PCM 2020 regarding this tree? I would keep the idea of the tree, obviously, because I honestly really like it. I, as we said last time, I would really change up a bit when it comes to the uh, the bars we have. There are some bars that just feel less worth compared to the others, and therefore you spend almost no points in one of them compared to the others. I personally didn't spend much on Discovery, and that's going to happen more for people that are in-depth into cycling and know the stats roughly, because they won't have to, for example, search who a Peter Sagan is and such. But if you're like a no cycling fan and you just dive in it for the game mechanics and for everything, then I don't know, it feels like that might come in handy more. I personally don't need it. Then again, yeah, I'm a bit of a unique case in that. Yeah, yeah. Personality, right. I feel like that's one's just less than everything else. Mm. Um, yeah, charisma, attentiveness. Oh, really? Network. Okay, I, I would uh, definitely put discovery. Oh, no, well, yeah, per, per, no, no, you're right. Discovery is a bit more useful, yes. Attentiveness um, kind of pulls it up a little bit, but not much. But yeah, no. You're right. Personal personality, I think, is the the lowest of the trees. Discovery is the second lowest. Yeah, although I really like the idea behind it. I feel like there is not enough, like, talking stuff with your rider, like, administrative stuff. Yeah. And for a management game, it's very important to have that as well because performance is on the rider itself it's a bit on fitness of course as well with the fitness planning so that's just the fitness planning aspect we've got the race aspect that goes full on on the race discovery is literally not really that administrative as it's pretty much just the riders that are in it yeah. and observation within that case be in game as well together with the bars that show up personality is like the only tree that fully focuses on Stuff that is outside of the 3D game that race. That is true. That mode. is true. That's an and interesting one, yeah. That's a really interesting part about the game because that is the part I fell in love with when I started playing Pro Cycling Manager because when I was a kiddo and I played PCM for 2008 and such and I was shit at 3D race, I was simulating a lot and I was just like planning the whole behind the scenes, which transfers I should take, what people I should send to the training camp right. as a 12, 13 year old or something that's really interesting to me personally. And I like that more than the 3D race, <laughs> to be honest. And at this point, it's still high up in there for me. The 3D race is fun, but I really like the planning and such. Yep. So a tree like this is important to me. I just feel like the points that are in it aren't that in depth. I would personally, for the network thing, I don't like the way they read it, the transfer system for pro cyclists. Mm. And that is mainly because it just feels a bit too random in the sense that I don't know why certain teams like me. I don't know why certain teams like me more after certain races because sometimes if I win a French race and an Italian team, uh, team becomes happy, yeah, why would that Italian team become happier when I win a French race and the French team just doesn't care about it? That it's kind weird, of yeah. stuff, it's, <clears throat> it's just not really hardcore transparent on why certain things change there. And therefore, I don't 100% like the system that is put in. Nonetheless, it's personally better than the one they had before because I don't really remember the other one, so it can't have been that good. <laughs> How <laughs> yeah, was it well, last year? The uh, system with team changing? Yeah, what was it? Was it just choosing it? The contract? Yeah, you just you just chose teams and you contacted them, and uh, then they came back with yay or nay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like this is better. Hmm. I feel like it there should better, be something still, more. One thing I would like to point out is that um, contracts don't matter at all. And that is such a shame. Like, th that money you get paid, you don't do you anything with it. It's Same in team mode. But... Yeah, it's, it's, completely, it's completely useless, worthless. It doesn't mean anything. So why, yeah. why is that even in there? Like, they, they have a whole section about... Like networking, or well, they have like a whole skill about networking, which is to make it such that you get better contracts or more the contracts yeah. you, you would like to have, which me also means like you get more money, more prestige, and stuff. But why can't you do anything with that then? Like, that buy is, a yacht or something. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> why, why can't you? You could buy your team a better bike or something. <laughs> no, invest no. it in the stocks. <laughs> yeah, invest in stock and become even richer because that is also so yeah, meaningful. Yeah. Not, um, but yeah. So I, I wonder if they maybe, maybe if they put something there for you to do with what you get from it, it would make it more meaningful and more interesting. Um, but yeah, I agree. But it would be really difficult to pull that off. I yeah. feel like we had something like that in a very different game that I played. I think it was in 2010, 29, 29 doesn't exist, 2009. Um, and that was the game FIFA Manager. And it's not Football Manager. It was the FIFA version of it. FIFA manager, and once you gain money as a coach, you were able to buy yachts and houses and oh, big villas yeah. and such. Right, right. So that was a small aspect that nobody gave a shit about. And I feel like if you go further on expanding that universe about your rider and his surroundings, then it won't be as interesting because it's not really tied to really the game that you're playing. But on the other side, maybe there should be like other bonuses. I, I can't think of much. Got to be honest at this hmm. point. Well, let's, I but, think it's um, worth exploring yeah. as a concept because if you have such an... It seems in a management game, like you say, it seems to be a an important aspect. The planning and, yeah. and contracts seem quite important, but they don't matter at all in here, in the pro cycling yeah. thing, which is a shame. I think they can expand on that. And if, if they... Um, make it more meaningful that that number oh you get ten thousand a month oh well it doesn't well i doesn't change anything from the 1500 per month i got before so <laughs> yeah what i what i would really think about it is that it's more of a concept that i would like changed not for pro cyclists but for career mode as in career mode your riders that are in your team they get certain amounts of money you obviously have to spend a bit when it comes to your finances and such, so it fits in the budget and such. But to be honest, I've never had trouble with budget, and I think it's really hard to really go bankrupt. Nonetheless, I feel like there should be a system where riders can ask to ride in certain races during a season upcoming, because in real life, that's a very, very realistic thing. Like Eli Viviani and, for example, Sam Bennett, He's a rider that's going to the Koenig Quick Step in 2020. And he's so put in his contract that he wants to ride the Tour de France because at Bora Hansgrohe, he left as he did not get any opportunities to ride the races that he wanted to race. All oh, right, yep. So riders would really set things straight before they sign a contract. If I sign for you, can I ride the races that I want to race? Otherwise, I'm a team that offers me roughly the same money but allows me to go to the big race i want to go to and such and has a team surrounding me some riders even ask to get certain amount of riders from their country or if they can bring a certain rider or for example if they join that you built a team around them that are certain requests that i would really like to see yeah, a okay. career mode that are for cyclists, but I just went totally off topic off here. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's fine. It's, I think that's interesting. One thing I would I would like to put a caveat on that. Um, I yeah. I agree that that is a um, that would make it a lot deeper. Um, one consequence that has is that be, it becomes incredibly micromanagey as well, though. Some people love yes. that stuff. So uh, <laughs> if it were were implemented in some capacity, something yeah. like this, they would have to make sure that it it is only something that really matters for very few riders in your team, like the top three yeah. riders or something, which I think for is like somewhat the role realistic. Of leader. Yeah, because otherwise it just devolves into endless micromanagement. And you, you know how, how difficult PCM already has it for displaying information that you need on one page right and we yeah. have that problem with automation all the time because there's just mm -hmm. so much data you need to show every at all times and yeah. just consider that you would have to show those requirements everywhere in season planning because otherwise I would honestly yeah not have an issue with that because yeah, if no, you now that, go that's, to the, your that's the problem you don't have an issue with that mm -hmm. the developers do have an issue with that because they don't know where to fucking put it in yeah, but I mean, I <laughs> if I'm thinking like a developer here, yeah. if I go to like my writer data page, page and such, yeah. there's space there to put it. It doesn't have to be much. 
it can be a, a three row column, a three row uh, table. Like we currently see the teams of the last eight years. I don't need to see that if oh, I click okay. on a rider on right. the first view. Like there's a lot of these small UX things that I really dislike at PCM. That, yep, yep. For okay, example, no, if you, that, that yeah, is a fair point. That's a fair like point that. then. That's uh, you're attacking it from the right right point. Like you, what you need to do in that instance is okay. What information is actually not that useful in this case, yeah. and where can we put that information that you actually need? Yeah. And I think just PCM in general needs to have a, a bit of a. Uh, it always evolves sure. in that regard, but I think they need to have a, a good cleanup of of uh, UI mm -hmm. stuff uh, um, as they yes. go along. But yeah, anyway, I, I think it's a good idea um, to have that because it makes makes your top riders have more character. And that is something that makes it yeah. more immersive. So yeah, I agree. And like you would you would have like a rider that because of that, you kind of implement implemented the system that someone is roughly stubborn about something. And you can also like even small scale add on to that that a rider that doesn't get something done has like not a meter or like maybe like three states of angriness or something. Oh yeah. And if he becomes like really angry about that, the fact that you haven't done anything in the full two years of being in your team, then he will not resign for the third year or something. I don't know. Yeah. As long like, as that is transparent and why he's, yeah, he's indeed. getting those bonuses or penalties to his contentness. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. Those are small things. And I think like if it was only for the leaders, indeed for the riders, I focus on that too much it's mainly for like your sprinter your main sprinter that he could go to the tour de france or your main climber that he could go to that race blah blah, blah. then yeah. it would fit yeah i think so. anyway back to the topic at hand yes what were we talking about again <laughs> uh, we were talking about what would you um what would you uh, change or well, how would you go forward with this uh oh trip? yeah i would i would also make it different in the fact that we uh last time we mentioned that you shouldn't be able to get everything. And I 100% agree with that because I feel like I'm going, I'm spent, I'm not thinking about what I'm spending it on because I can get it anyway in the future. And yeah, uh, exactly. that way you don't give character to the rider you currently have. So you don't have certain build strategies. That would be interesting. But then again, I don't feel like I would be the player to go to level seven to uh, 37. I think 37 was the max. I don't remember yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, I got my rider there I'm, in the end, so yeah. Yeah, I'm most likely not the person that will get there eventually, um, because I, I feel like once I well, I, I think I was there in the fourth, fourth or fifth mm -hmm. season already with a uh, yeah my previous rider. So. I think I'll roughly get there as well. But the thing is that I I feel like once I I've won the world championship, spoilers. Um, if I win. Two of the three Grand Tours, most likely the Tour of the you would quit, if I yeah. win that one, then I'd honestly be like, well, well then I'd probably just start a, a different series. Oh, as yeah, yeah. Excellent. I've got my main goals. Yeah, same here. It's uh, why, why grind it out? It just happened so fast, yeah. that leveling. Because um, yeah. the, level, uh, ca the leveling doesn't get any slower. Um, mm -hmm. It's always 300 points. Uh, yeah, that's, so, that's dumb. It's quite quick. <laughs> it's like it takes four, four years, four to five years to get to max level, which yeah. is uh, quite fast. Yeah, but um, I think the the best way forward, taking the developer perspective as well as the player perspective, mm -hmm. would be to keep the it the way that it is, um, but balance it according to what we now know, which should have been done with patches yeah. already, and I'm quite disappointed that. They didn't address a single thing in this tree of yes. how Im imbalanced it is. This just doesn't play well the way it is. Um, but it ha does have potential. I like the, the idea in general. Um, I agree that probably at least half the points available should be cut so that you can make proper uh, decisions that have lasting effects. Um, and once the skill tree is actually balanced that will make for very interesting gameplay as such. So um, I would not like to see big changes to the tree because 
the tree itself has not really been tried. Like this skill system yeah. has not really been tried because of how fucking imbalanced it is uh, and how yep. casually you throw points into it. It's just there's not much to it at the moment because of how out of whack it is. And I think if they just for the next iteration of it fix this shit up, made it more balanced in that way, made the game itself um, lower the power level of your rider. Like, lower the power level. It's way too high. <laughs> and then, <laughs> uh, so that you don't don't uh, crush extreme difficulty with someone who doesn't even use the, the overpowered skills. So, um, yeah, that would be... Yeah. I think that's the right start. And then for 2021, uh, then think about how to make it more interesting from a game mechanics point of view. Um, because, well, this is... This hasn't really been taken to its to a state where you can properly comment on it it's so this feels so early and unpolished that you can't really tell how good it will work yeah i got the same feeling i do have a question for you yes as you are a developer of plenty of games if you don't know what his channel is check him out in the description by the way because i forgot to say that so far and he's made games with his company now uh, for example, in automation and such, if a certain fan base would say there's plenty of bugs in this version, like in PCM 18, for example, or 19, um, and do you think if you fix the bugs that that will result in better sales the next season? Because I've got the feeling that people really want a lot of bugs fixed in PCM, but on editions that they do get fixed, they are often complaining that there's not enough features next to the things that they fixed. Ah, interesting. Yeah, sense? yeah. Um, so you're yeah. they're kind of between two fires, or they either jump in the first one or the second one. Right. And I feel like we're never happy. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I would say that the amount of bugs need to be on a... Like, you can't go bug-free. If you go bug-free, then you've yeah. spent your time in a bad way. Even though that yeah. sounds weird, but that is like mm -hmm. the... If you if you have a game that is 98%, 98% towards perfect in one aspect, then those last 2% will take ages to complete, which means that yeah. that is a lot of effort you should have spent elsewhere. Because 98% is good enough. It's the concept of this is good enough. Automation by no means is good enough in many, many of its aspects. But um, mm -hmm. as a concept. So I think Pro Cycling Manager has too many of the old bugs that are very difficult to fix. Because if you fix a bug, you have to, uh, or some of the bugs, bugs um, you have to dig so deep into the system and the game yeah. mechanics. And I think they are working with a house of cards that is falling apart because of how long this game has been around. Um, I'm about 99% sure that is exactly... Yeah, it's, you, you cut out there for, for a sec, but uh, that is exactly the case, I assume, yes. Um, I'm about 99% I'm about sure that that is indeed the case. That yes, okay. Um, and I think they are afraid to touch it. And I understand why. Um, so, yeah. But that is unfortunate. I think the uh, the Pro Cycling Manager experience needs some core bug fixes in the game mechanics itself. And there are loads of little things that add up a little too much for many people. Yep. And that is why they are complaining. And we see this with automation. And to get back to your question there, um, we do see that the more polished versions with the same amount of content make people more happy. It can be that you add just just plain content, which isn't new features, but at the same mm -hmm. time polish it up with bug fixes and everything, and people are way happier. They're like, oh, this is the, the best thing you've done ever. It's like, yeah, we haven't really changed anything. It's just like now, now, that it's suppo now it's working as it's supposed to, and that makes people happy. So uh, we've seen that in our review scores. I, in recent times, Steam has changed a bit about the uh, how reviews are presented to the player of games, uh, that it's a little easier to leave your review. But we went from something like 
eighty percent, so just a, uh, at the mark of very positive, um, to overwhelmingly positive for automation. So ninety six percent or something crazy, crazy high, um, and that was just coming from Polish in the last last few um, patches, basically making the game play better with what is there. Um, we are going to implement new features, of course, and we are constantly working on the UI and so on. But uh, I think PCM would benefit in the same way. So I would argue that fixing those old bugs will make the game feel better. And that is not something that many people can point a finger at, like say, oh, yeah, it's exactly odd. They fixed this issue, so now I like the game more. Now it's like it feels better because it's it yes. gels more, it, like everything works as it feels like it's working as intended and we are not there with pcm for many instances like the breakaway mechanics and and stuff there's so many li little things that all add up and are not not quite where they should be but i, I don't know how like, much time yeah. they can invest into it i mean it doesn't seem like they are putting, putting it's not many a lot. days of dev I time into it. it's not a lot yeah i uh, think that I can't say how much because I'm pretty sure I signed an NDA before I got to know that. <laughs> but I can tell you that it's like uh, a contract work. It feels like, yeah, for me as an external viewer, it looks like a contract work that they take on for the Tour de France to make these games in this pack pack of games. Yeah, and they just make those games and they go to their own games and the other contract work they have. That's kind of my feeling towards it at the moment. Nonetheless, I do feel like the game has become better when it comes to those old technical bugs. There were a lot of technical bugs. With technical bugs, I mean crashes, data that loads very slowly, certain things that didn't work, like the actual bugs as in a feature that is not working. Yeah. Now I feel like we have a lot of bugs that maybe weren't very visible because those features didn't really 100% work all the time. And now they've be just come to the surface. And I feel like we have a lot of like bugs in the sense that something that's not working as it should be instead of something that's not working. So for me personally, the game has gotten better in the last three years yeah, because I really yeah, had certainly. like the worst yeah. fucking year in 2015, I think. And... Now it feels a lot more smooth, and I haven't crashed a single time on this version, which oh, is, oh, you. I haven't had. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've any had bugs. about I would say a hundred crashes or something. Really? Yeah. I've had none. <laughs> oh no, more more than a hundred. I don't know why. No, wait a second, more than a hundred crashes because I have a playtime of two hundred hours. I think it crashes about twice per hour. I have like one hundred seventy hours now, one hundred eighty. I'm not sure about that, and I haven't had a single crash. Oh, that's awesome. Except for one that was my own fault because my recording software crashed. Oh, ah, yeah, okay, well, fine. <laughs> so I can't blame the game for that. No. Outside of that, I just have, like, the ordinary small things that itch me. And, like, for example, a time gap that is not counted, even though it's, like, straight up 40 seconds that I have as an advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, like, a rider that can easily ride away at a certain point in the race that makes no sense yeah, why exactly. nobody's riding behind him. Or... Just, yeah, just those small itches that make it that much less and unfortunately doesn't make it the game I wanted it to be. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. There, there are a lot of little things now that if they... Um, <laughs> I would like them to really just bite the bullet for one year and not make a new game, but rather, like, make a... Go, go through and fix the shit up. It's like that, yeah. those, all those little things, like release a patch, like to show a bit of goodwill. I think this would, I think they need to. If you look at their review scores in general, yeah. um, how it has declined over the years, I think they need a bit of goodwill. And with the new publisher, maybe the publisher is up for that to ensure the long time viability of the the game. Um, that they they fix it up and then take those fixes to the next version the next year. But I, I can't see that happening because they need the Me money. Either. But that would would be what is required, I believe. Also yes, to, win, got... to win back the players a bit. Yeah, true. I feel like the whole setup of the publisher 
is better than last year with that new publisher, Big Bang Games, instead of Folks Home Interactive. I do know that the people that some people that were working on Pro Cycling Manager from Focus are now working for Big Ben on Pro Cycling Manager. <laughs> okay. So is that a good thing that or bad thing? Doesn't change much then. The thing is that I personally feel like it's gone better, but I'm very biased on that. I'm gonna plainly give give you that. I got more attention because my channel was bigger. And because of that, I might just be biased towards having them, yeah, as something better than the previous ones. Sure, I mean, if, they, if the really developer talks me. to you directly, you tend to have a better opinion of them. That's just standard. And yeah. that's understandable. That's that's perfectly viable bias to have. But um, yeah, it is a bias. Still. So that's, of course, not yeah. something that the general player feels. And, yes, um, I've got one more yeah. question for you. Yes. As the game works with Unreal names at the start, it's not really related to Pro Cyclists, but it's a sort of side question because we're talking and why not? Yeah. Um, do you feel like the game is too entitled on the community doing stuff for the game as you don't have realistic stats, realistic names, realistic teams, realistic shirts or anything at the start of the game? Now, right. hmm. at the start, we release a database to make real names, real stats, yep. real shirts, and such to fix that. At the start of 2020, the community, again, has to release a database that fixes all the teams and riders for the next season with the transfers. We've done that last week. Shout out to the WorldDB. Um, I feel like they're too dependent on the community as... I work. I put so much time into databases. It's. I've got the feeling that I'm throwing a part of my life away doing so. Yeah. Sometimes. I understand. And it. Yeah. like, it's weird because the game releases in June. The start of the season is in January. The the game releases in June because the Tour de France is a week after the release most of the time. And they want to have the marketing boost of the Tour de France as the Tour de France games, the PlayStation version is selling better, if I recall correctly, than the PC version. Yeah. And obviously they're going to focus on just selling the bunch together as much as they can. So they release this near one of the biggest races that they have in their region in France because they work from France. And yeah, the Tour de France is the advocate for that. Now in January, I don't know. I just feel like I always have the problem that from January to May, I... I feel like the community is just having to do too much to make sure that the game is still being played, the one from yeah. the last year, because You'll if there was no 2020 DB, you... I would not be playing PCM19 this no, next right. couple of months. Do you um, also have to update stages? or uh, We have stage makers that make all the stages of D20 right. as much as we can. Not all of them, because it's literally insane to do so. Oh, yeah. We do... Is and hopefully that's enough for the players because community yeah it's all dependent on the community and making a stage is probably one of the hardest things to get with making assured if i look at making databases i'm doing this the easiest part i'm just making the database and i have people that i know that i work with that are really working hard on doing shirts and and all the stages that don't often get credited enough because they do more than me so yeah so yeah i just feel like they're too dependent on that. And they've done so since the start, pretty much. Mm. I don't know what to think about it. Yeah. If it was like your game, you wouldn't want it to be dependent on the community to be successful. That is right. So what, um, let, me, let me give you the perspective of um, a developer in a slightly similar situation. So with automation, we mm -hmm. also have loads of good mod makers um, that mm -hmm. are providing quite a bit of content um, that is not required for the game to be good, but um, does add more flavor and does add different things to the game. For instance, we won't ever do trucks in the game. The game is not made, made for it, uh, like lorries, trucks, big, big things. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the mod community has figured out how to make them, so now you can download them from the workshop. Um, what mm -hmm. we have done over the years is the best modders... Um, 
we have approached the best modders, asked them if we could make their content vanilla. And um, when they agreed, yes, that's awesome. So we, we get that content in there and then have them do contract work for us so that they actually get paid for modding. So, but they are not yeah. modding in that sense, but they instantly produce vanilla content. And we have found excellent people that way. And I think the um, PCM should basically be doing the same. Because it shouldn't be your uh, your job as the community to figure out what stats the riders should have next season. That is something the game yeah. needs to figure out. The real name thing is a different story because that's licensing and so on. They can't do that. Yeah, I, I get that. I get um, that. But like stats should be fine. They should have proper play testing and balanced testing done. Um, that is not like release the game and then uh, let the community figure it out. Um, and all that work you, you're talking about, about fixing the database up, I, I assume that everything, like the name part is the easy part and everything else is the hard part. Yes. So, um, so every what I would say is they should hire people from the community who have shown themselves to be competent to do that job. Because it's not really ethical to rely on the community that much for that long of a time. You can argue that, okay, you're a small indie developer. Like for two or three years or seasons, so to say, you rely on the community to pull that off. But at this point, you can't really argue that they have a publisher behind them. Um, they have had years and years and years, tw almost 20 years now of experience yes. um, making this game. And it hasn't changed much on the back end it's always the same every year so i don't think they have much of an excuse anymore to at least get people from the community and somehow try to pay them back that could be that they are they do the work like if they are super short on budget you could always offer them look you're doing doing an amazing work um and we we love what you do and you're an important part for the game to work properly as as people would expect that alone, just saying that, would be a big benefit to the people doing the work, right? If it comes yes. from the developer. Second thing you could easily do, which doesn't cost you anything, is put the names in the credits of those people who have done hard work or directly promoting that content. I know the, with the real name thing, that that's, makes it more difficult, but that could be, it could be worked around in a way. Um, mm -hmm. So give them credit from the developer directly and so that it's visible in the game because these people, these modders, can then use it on their CV to get other jobs. So there is yep. a benefit to it, right? Um, and then like, the most ethical thing, I would say, is to go a step further and say, okay, guys, we, we do all that, like credit and promote it, and then we also pay you a little bit. But we don't have much, so don't expect too much. It's just a little, like, a little gesture. Right, I think yes. that would go a long way to making this a much better, um, much better system where it is accepted by the mod community to put in that work, to be happy about doing that work, and create something that is even better than what we have right now because there's more motivation behind it. Yes, I also, as an extra to that, I do YouTube and I do the DB next to that, so. I've seen both sides of the coin on the fact that if they look at a YouTuber that promotes their content and gives them sales, they support YouTubers quite a bit in the sense that they, if I would ask for a pro cycling manager key or five for giveaways and such, I'd get them. If I would do random stuff and ask for support around a certain tournament, they would look into it and give, do what they could and such so for that they are really decent and they help out kind of or kind of repay the debt of like promoting their content something like that but if i compare that to well you do I free do market you do free maker, marketing for them yeah and if i compare that to the to the db work i do i think that the work me and the world db team do on the world DB sells much more copies than my YouTube videos. Oh, okay, even yeah. though it's like I've got videos of like 
if I say views, then somebody starts talking about bragging, but that's not what I mean. Like if I, I've got 900,000 views or something a year. Yeah. That's a lot on pro cycling manager. Oh, it is for and pro cycling manager. Obviously yep. they feel that for the sales, but with you, that's the same. And with most of the YouTubers that are high up in pro cycling manager, that is the same for DB makers. I can easily say that 75% of the players of Pro Cycle Manager 2019 now have the World DB installed on their system. That is oh, right. 100% a fact. That means that most likely they are using that database or the other one that we have of like the new version, the 2020 version. Of obviously, there are people that have database installed that they don't use, but I would guess that the majority uses the ones that are most popular. Personally, that's just my guess. Um, that would honestly make me feel like the database is more worth to the players that bought the game. And I've gotten a lot of comments that are like, you guys are the ones that make us buy the games because yeah, they wouldn't really be interested if there was no community aspect behind it in that sense. And because of that, I just don't know whether it's too much on YouTube and less on the community on the development side that get the credit because I feel like as a YouTuber, I get way more credit than maker, even though I feel like I put way more time. Well, actually that's not true. I think I, I spend an equal amount of time between the two. Right. And right. I see a kind of odd difference there and it feels weird because yeah, as a YouTuber, yeah, it's marketing, free marketing. I know that the publisher likes that while the publisher might not get to see much of the development side, because I feel like, the developers more know me as the world to be kind of developer. And I've spoken with developers of cyanide and such, and yeah, they help me. If I have trouble, they ask stuff. If there's a bug in pro cycling manager that might've accidentally been made by the world DB that has happened in the past, then yeah, they notice that there's a lot of people like put stuff in there and we help each other out. So there's support there from that, but not really from the publisher while the marketing side is a lot from the publisher and not really from the developer side. Yeah, and but I it's a like natural, natural split to occur, yeah. More, yeah. That is, yeah, that's a bit of an yeah. odd thing I noticed. Yeah, oh, it's interesting, yes. Uh, of course, I only see one side of that um, for PCM, that is. And that is... Uh, I, I, was, I felt a little neglected, though, even as a YouTuber who has sold loads and loads of copies. I would, I would guesstimate um, more than a thousand at least. Um, yeah. over the over the years for sure um getting loads of views and i so on. agree and i think that's mainly because they're situated in front of a lot of they thought i spoke french when i when i first talked to them and i was the only person that was not from france that went to the launch event of pro cycling manager huh, okay. and was invited to that Holy and shit. i had to do yeah. a lot to be invited to that i Oh my god, I spammed that dude like a maniac just because I wanted to, yeah, uh, yeah, I felt deserving of doing that. Oh, absolutely. Now, yeah. I think that, that not only you, but other YouTubers as well deserve to go. But the launch event is in French. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't, wouldn't help so me. So yeah. I was sitting there, I know basic French, but I was like, well, this is going there. And yeah, I kind of understood that. And then someone asked me a question in French. I'm like, we, we. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was uh, perfect. I feel like it's just not focused enough on the international market when it comes to marketing and yep. more on the French part. Do you, do you think that will change uh, now that the uh, new publisher is on board for over a year already? Because I advised it. it. Yeah. As, for example, you and, for example, Tour de France was also launched there. So the Tour de France game. Um, there are plenty of YouTubers for that game that also strike real highs on YouTube. An example is Lucas Pauli. He's a really good guy on YouTube. He's a friendly guy. I talk to him once in a while as well. And I feel like he would be a guy that should be invited to the to the France version of that because he seems to be one of the main engines between the between the Tour de France game and the international market. Oh, While right. obviously uh, a YouTuber like Stiros, the French guy, well, the this French-Belgian guy, the French part of Belgium, 
Um, he is, I feel like, a bit more hugged by the community, by, by uh, the developers, I mean, by the uh, publishers, because he's from France, so they they know him because of that. Ah, okay, yeah. Well, yeah no, I def don't definitely not, not being French there the is, is, yeah. is a, a problem, yes. Um, yeah, but, but that is that is maybe a um, good point. Maybe they are a little too France-centric with their approach to uh, uh, communicating with agree. the community and so on. So... Yeah, but that seems yeah, to be their biggest market too. I don't know about that. I honestly don't know. I would like to see the stats of that. Well, you can you can I ask ask the the devs the publisher if they want to give yeah. it give it to you. <laughs> Probably not. I but, think there's uh, like a website, Steam Spy, where we can like spy into the details. I don't think I don't that works GRPs anymore. That. I think Steam has made those things private, so you can't really? see that anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, what I think about it is that if France was the main exporting area for their game, then it is also most likely because they support it around the Tour de France and they do a lot of marketing in the Tour de France and on TV on the Tour de France and a lot on French TV yeah. and in French newspapers. And I never saw an ad in Belgium at all about oh, this really? game during okay. the Tour de France. I've never seen a non-French ad about Pro Cycling Manager hmm. in my life. Maybe and they I feel have like done their the ma their marketing research and came to the conclusion that well, uh, no one is fucking interested in cycling outside of France. But maybe that but isn't I totally really disagree. true, is it? So I d I don't know. I I could easily say that Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark, potentially, but Germany is Poland crazy about well. cycling too, right? Poland and Germany as well. Yeah. Germany is a bit less for me personally because I yeah just view wise I just don't have to people. Because, yeah, you take the whole market, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I, f I feel like those are the countries that really shine through. Obviously, that is also because I base it off the fact that I don't have 20% of French viewers or something. But that's obviously not a good way of thinking because French people dub their movies in French. So obviously they watch YouTube in French. So they watch yeah. French YouTubers. Other countries watch English YouTubers. Now, yeah. yeah I've got that's... the feeling that that is the reason for that. Yeah, probably. Probably. A little bit yeah. of a bubble there, I would think. Yeah. Um, maybe they haven't ventured out too, too much out of it. Um, but then again, they, uh, I would think the um, Cyanide does do Blood Bowl as well, right? So, yeah, true. And I, I would think that from these games, they should have seen that there is an international market for their games in general. Yeah. So it's it's weird that they kind of ignore it for a Pro Cycling Manager. But yeah. I agree. Um, anyway, I think we uh, we are now almost <laughs> oh, almost back up to <laughs> insane lengths for for <laughs> podcast again. <clears throat> oh God, uh, what have we done? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. But it was a it was a great talk. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed I, I it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I hope the listeners did as well. And this is certainly something that can, was was properly put on in the background while you're doing chores. And <laughs> now um, I think we we should we should uh, call it a, a day for the podcast here. Yes, Any sure. um, finalizing thoughts? Finalizing thoughts is that I like the direction that the tree that we spoke of during the first part of the video uh, is going. I like the area that is going. I just don't think it's implemented to the standards that I would want it to be implemented. It's not balanced enough at all. And I would just like to see more inventive ways to go around as the ones, the things that are in it are too much in a bit of a bubble. So you have performance, those three fit together, but I feel like they, like some some of the things that we spoke about, like information and passion should be in one, all that kind of stuff. I think they should just refigure out what stuff fits under what branch and if they really need that certain skill and if they should place those skills together, etc. Yeah. And I think you can really set up something beautiful if you really spend a lot of time testing that because that's the real thing about balance oh, well, we have you already done the testing it, basically and it did basically. not get tested a lot 
yeah. yeah. But That's uh, yeah, kind of what I got here. I definitely, uh, definitely agree. I think we have put uh, forth our thoughts pretty, pretty well, even though it wasn't very concise. And um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for your time. And I shall catch you another time when it's uh, yeah, PCM thanks. discussion again. All right, you have a good. I one. really enjoyed it. Goodbye, man. Cheers.